Well, hello, Park Ridge. I come to you in the middle of the week, obviously after um, a really sad day yesterday with the incredible loss of life in Texas. I want to read to you a passage of encouragement as we remember those who have lost loved ones in this terrible yet another school tragedy in our nation. 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We've experienced this so many times, and especially us here in South Florida, right here in Coral Springs and Parkland. Every time another event like this happens, it reminds us of the temporary nature of our human lives here on earth. It reminds us of the depravity and the sinfulness and the brokenness in the world in which we live. It can also, though, be a reminder of the great hope that we have in Christ. And so as we pray for those in Texas who are experiencing this absolutely terrible loss and time of grief, that we would grieve with them, weep with them, pray for them, and also look for opportunities that God may use here to share the hope that can only be found in him. So that as we experience the pain and the brokenness and the loss of this world, we do not have to grieve as those who have no hope. The greatest news that we can share, the greatest hope that we can share, the greatest victory that can be won is through Jesus and through Jesus alone. So my hope and prayer for you and for me and for our church is that we would point people to the truth who is Jesus Christ. Let's pray now for those in Texas. Lord Jesus, I lift to you the families, all of those little children and adults who lost their lives in this terrible, horrific incident. I pray, God, that you would be their peace. I pray that you would be their hope and their consolation. For those families that know you in that number, I pray that they would cling to you as they never have before, knowing that you will hold them and keep them. For any of those families who do not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that they would meet you now, that they would run to you now, that you would be their encourager, that you would show them a better way. Lord, I, I just pray for that community as a whole. We here, of course, can understand the pain and the sadness of the community more than most communities because of our own loss and sadness here just a few short years ago. And so I ask God that you would be the encourager and the redeemer and the one who provides hope and healing in this desperate situation. Lord, we can't understand why things like this happen. We don't seem to have an answer and a grasp as to why. But we declare that you are sovereign. We declare that you are holy. We declare that you have plans even when things seem hopeless and dark. And so I ask God that you would use this bad situation for your good and ultimately for your glory in the lives of people, in the lives of that community. I pray for the churches there, for those pastors who are now giving leadership and pointing people to the cross. I, I pray that you would be their strength as well. And so, Lord, again, I, I just ask that you would do what only you can do in such a terrible situation. Thank you for what you're doing. May we continue to trust you no matter what. I pray it in your name. Amen. Thank you, Park Ridge.
I hope you'll be part of what we're doing this weekend at church as uh, we worship together and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you.